do 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 Here we start right now. You started up, um, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Yo, salute, 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 salute. It's your boy, Gmail Legion of Knicks, here today to talk about who the Knicks should be facing off in the first round of the 2023-2024 NBA playoffs. Before we get started, make sure to hit the like, subscribe to the channel, make sure to hit the dark notification bell to get each and every notification for each and every video I put out there. Also, subscribe, or sorry, not subscribe, but sign up for underdogfantasy.com. Use the code Legion to get matched up to 500 bucks in your first deposit. There's a lot of prop bets, a lot of bets, period. To put your money on this NBA season. As you see right now, the Pelicans losing by 13 to the Lakers. So you know this is going to be a really interesting NBA playoffs, especially if the Lakers make it through, who are probably one of the chosens, and they'll probably uh, do a lot of things for Lakers players. So better than Lakers players in the, in the playoffs. Anyway, let's get to it, man. The New York Knicks getting into second seat, home field advantage, or home court, excuse me, advantage, have to face off against the seventh and eighth seeds, or whoever's a winner of that series, that playing series. With the Miami Heat and the 76ers, two teams who the Knicks have had some success against this season, more so against the Philadelphia 76ers, going three and one against them, absolutely molly whopping them, only losing one game, 73 to 76, uh, nine, which is probably one of our worst games of the season, where the Knicks could not, no one on the Knicks could hit a shot. Uh, but for the most part, the Knicks have been dominant against the 76ers, even with Joel and B being there. We actually beat them by 30, uh, a little bit, I think a little bit more than 30, 32 or something like that. The first meeting we had against them, uh, when Joel Embiid, you know, he had a quiet, ineffective, uh, unimpactful 30 points. Then on the flip side, you have the eternal enemies down to I-95 with the Miami Heat, a team that we've had some success against this season, going two and one. Last losing to them when they, uh, I think it was in April when they had a uh, scary Terry Rozier, uh, but in a team that we've had some bad blood with, going back, I mean, for I don't know how many years, uh, but ran his ugly head probably the most recently. In the playoffs last year, beating us in six games, a team that made its way all the way through the play-in, that honestly, outside of Jimmy and some of the shooters kind of struggled all the way up until the last game against the Bucks, where Bam Adebayo finally found his religion and got his head of steam that helped defeat the Knicks. Guys, please try again. All right, that's my Siri. I don't know why my Siri is spying on me, but uh, yeah, where was it? Yeah, uh, a team in the Miami Heat that. Uh, it's definitely well some depth. Guys like Max Drews, uh, Gabe Vincent are no longer there. They've had some volatility in their depth behind Tyler Hero's been Tyler Hero, who's been hurt, um, as well as uh, uh, Jaime Hasquez, who people want to blame for the Randall injury, but you can't do that because Randall should not show. But anyway, that's a top for another day. So we're gonna get to him, man. Nick G, how you doing, my guy? Salute, bro. Wait, hold up. Now you're not coming through the... Can you say it? Well, you, your sound is not working. <laughs> yeah, his sound is not... Yeah, his sound is just working. We'll give him a little space, man. I'm going to say salute to everybody in the chat, man. Everybody, salute, salute, salute. <coughs> Excuse me for the cost, man. From that Sunday, man, I got worse the past two days, man. I've been destroyed. Oh, that Sunday was, the, was bad. Monday was even worse. Tuesday... Got a little better today, but trying to make it so. Please excuse me for the uh, the coughing and the hacking of phlegm. Let me say salute to everybody while Nick gets his sound fixed. Wilson Dang in the building. He says, bring it on. Game plan for both teams until the end of tomorrow's results. Real talk, man. We'll talk about what the Knicks need to do on both sides or the floor to defeat these teams. JJ, my brother, salute. White Mike, my guy, salute. He said, who do you rob, son? Yo, don't worry about it. You trying to get me locked up, White Mike. Chill, bro. Come on, son. Tay's sixes, we might we might beat them by 36. Hey, uh, uh, let's 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 be a little humble. You know what I'm saying? I see it on social media. I've seen people talk about, yo, we can take on any team. Look, in any look, any team can beat you at any moment. In any series. Right? I just watched uh well, yeah, man, I think it was Baron Davis. He was on with one of my favorite point guards, by the way. I love Baron Davis, man. Pause. I love his game. It's one of my favorite players. Um he talked about how 
when they played the Dallas Mavericks, uh, was it 2009? When they, the first seed, uh, number one seed beat the eight, uh, sorry, number eight seed beat the number one seed. They said, take away Dirk Nowitzki's left hand. I forget exactly the logic exactly to it, but I think he said, take away Dirk Nowitzki's left hand. Because it's something like, basically, like, that's how he wants to set up his shot. And it threw him off. He had no, like, he, it, it threw him off that whole series. And if you watch it, that Warriors series versus the Mavericks, man, one of the most underrated in terms of just having a game plan and shutting down another team's uh, key player. Uh, and they, I mean, that's a team that had uh, B. Diddy, Stephen Jackson, Adrian Biedrins. I don't think they had Michael Petrus. I might be wrong. I don't think they had him at that time. But, um, yeah, just just masterful. So, again, there's there's ways. Any team could beat you, man. If they, take, if they find a way to neutralize Jalen Brunson and then neutralize... You know, our so-called double team, I wouldn't call them zone per se, but our double team breakers in Josh Hart and I Hart. And we can't shoot from outside. And we look like how we did last year. Where we, no one else besides RJ and Brunson could shoot. And even RJ struggled from outside. Then we can lose. So uh, let me see if Nick, Nick, you good, bro? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Perfect, you hear me? perfect. Yes, sir, I hear you. Heartbreak Nova salute. He says, we want the heat, man. Chill, bro. Mets are cooking. Yes, they are. Mets are cooking right now. Let's chill, man. man who man, watches first the and Mets? I mean, the Mets, man. Yo, I mean, don't. Why are you? You're such a. Yo, my Mets are doing well this year. We were we were like, how many games below 500? I think we're what? Five, I think we're 7-7 seven seven right now. Like, look, 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 look. You, yeah, you got to believe. That's all I got to say to you, man. You got to believe. Let you me see. Believe. All right. Okay. I mean, yeah. I, I got to support them because, like, they're the same colors as, as the Knicks. So. Yeah, see? So, Good job. Right. I'm proud of you, Nick. You, you're, you're a good dude, man. You're human. All right. Let's get to it, Nick. Talk to me about your overall thoughts. Let's talk about the game, it's the, the series itself. Who do you think will come out ahead? 76ers versus the Heat. Uh, the mm -hmm. Heater team, they do have several guys who, I think they played late in the season in, uh, by the way, the Mets just scored. Uh, several guys come back late. I know Tyler Hero played the last few games. He's He was out with a, uh, I can't remember his injury. I know J Jimmy Butler also got hurt with a foot injury. I mean, I don't think he was out that much. Um, so they're coming a little bit hobbled. To me, I don't think they have the same punch as that team did la had, had last year. Gabe Struess and uh, sorry, Gabe Vincent, Max Struess, Duncan mm -hmm. Robinson, who got who got hot in the sec. I think the second half of like the second half of the season. If that makes sense. Yeah, last yeah. year. Well, <laughs> more in the playoffs to be honest, but yeah, they did. Yeah, but yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm want to hear your thoughts on on the series overall. Who do you think will come out come out ahead in that in that one game? Uh, so, I would hate to to face the Heat. Something about the Heat and injuries, man. I just don't like them. Period. Um, but I would prefer to see a big man matchup. There's something about playing Embiid, one of the best scorers, against two of the best defensive players in the league. Mm. I would love that matchup. Um, I still feel like I would rather probably a couple more weeks before um, facing Philly. And the main reason is being um, Mitchell Robinson is not fully healthy. And I feel mm. like he just needs like, just needs like game shape. Um, I feel like Tibbs kind of kind of played him a little extra just to get him in game shape. But he's not in shape. Um, yes, and I we'll think. see. We'll see. I think, but, but if I had to choose, I would choose, you know, Pretty much Philly, only because of injuries. And I want to see us have a long run. But in terms of who do you think is going to actually win tomorrow between the Heat and the 76ers, but like the matchup itself, Embiid, if, if Embiid is healthy? Um, I, I want to see Philly because I just don't <coughs> trust the Heat. Like, this is the year that you can say, I don't trust the Heat. And it mm. makes sense. Um, you know... <laughs> So much come out recently, man. I, I just feel like Tyler Hero is kind of like on borrowed time. I feel he does, mm. he's not connected to the team. I um, agree. He's always hurt at the right time, so to speak. And then, like, Jimmy Jimmy is, like, always that X factor. Like, he, he raises up for the playoffs, hands down. I think he's an incredible player. But at some point in time, late ramp-ups for the playoffs is going to not – pay off for that team hands down it, it just got to you you don't 
I grew up with the with the theology of if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. Mm. And they are like the the smart kid in class who only studies on the last week or the last day before. <laughs> I like that. And they get a freaking A. And wow, I like that. You know I like what I mean? That. <coughs> so that, that's my point of view. Um, I would really like us to to get past the heat, though. I mean, well, to not face the heat. And that's the thing with when I, I th- th- this Heat team does not seem the same as it did last year. I don't know if you've seen some of the post game uh, co- uh, news conferences or whatever you want to call them, post game, whatever conferences with Jimmy Butler. It just doesn't seem as confident. You know, last year he was talking about playoff Jimmy, this and that. And now he's already about the playoffs, and this year's not as confident. Just watching some of the Heat games, mm-hmm. like you said, that cohesiveness. I think that anytime you. It, it, Whenever you have to depend on a singular player to give you the production of, say, two to three depth guys, right? As in, Terry Rozier is now kind of replacing the production you got from Struess and, and Gabe Vincent. And not just, mm-hmm. you know, not just Gabe Vincent scoring them, but just also, just also defensively. Say what you want. Yeah. Gabe Vincent last year gave Jalen Brunson some issues in games. No, I, he, he put in work, and then he was not, he was shooting well. Yeah. So he couldn't, you couldn't just cheat off of him. Nope. Nope. So I, 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 this, this Heat team, something is up. You know, Jaime's his flash this season. I think he just came back from injury. I think, and I think he played the last two, three games mm-hmm. of the season last time I checked. But I'm not. I know he had a. I think the first game he played well against us. But I'm not totally scared of scared of him. Uh, obviously, they still have Caleb Martin, but I don't see Caleb Martin having the run he did like he did last year, where he couldn't miss against the Knicks. Uh, yeah, he's really like a Kofian cowboy, man. It was just Dude, stupid. He shot sixty percent against the freaking Celtics. Yeah, and then he shot thirty percent against the Nuggets, like thirty some percent against the Nuggets. But what was they were? I think as a team they were close to sixty percent last year, like in the playoffs, yeah. right? Up until the Celtics. I can see that. To peel off a little bit. Well, they struggled from defensively three, against they us, were but like bananas from three. Yeah, yeah, they could not. That left, th- that left wing three, or the right. Well, I actually shot well on both wings, but I just remember that that I think it was a right wing. Or le- whichever. I know it was a left wing. I take it back. Struess, Robinson, they could not miss to save their lives. Top of the key. I mean, McKinley Martin had some big shots against him. So, I don't know. I just feel with teams like that, it's so hard for them. Like, they have to win a championship that year because so many things have to go right for them. And then when you start to peel it back, and then now you're investing in guys like Terry Rozier, who I like as a scorer. But I think he'll be asked to just do too much. Uh, I just don't see the Heat as dangerous. Now, the 76ers... MVP Joel Embiid is not playoff uh, uh, Embiid. It's just they're not the same. Uh, and as you can see, I think the last few years, Joel Embiid's numbers have actually been dipping the playoffs. He's averaging like 23 the last two years. When before, in his earliest career, he was averaging like 28, 30 points uh for the playoff runs but Joel mm-hmm. Embiid now man I, I just think that there's not enough depth behind him um mm-hmm. Tyrese Maxey's an excellent player but this is a team that also shoots poorly from three so all that dribble drive penetration is kind of a moot point because if you can just collapse the middle which the Knicks love to do the Knicks biggest Achilles heel once you do that is to hit threes on them right that's why the Celtics kill us have been killing us the past two years because they have dribble drive penetrators and they have guys who can murder you from three so you just run the Knicks defense ragged, you know, all the rotational stuff. Like, we just get tired out, and then now you're hitting 27 threes against us a game. 76 don't have that. Now, De'Anthony Meltz has also been out. <coughs> Tobias Harris has been, I mean, wow. When you talk about, I wouldn't say fall off, but sheesh, that guy is just not, he's a he's a shell. I don't even know how to put it. Robert Covington's yeah. been out. Like, they just don't have the horses. Like, Oubre's a guy who can hit some threes against you, but he's so inconsistent that, you know, he has to go – you'd he, have to go hot for, you know, how many games? Five to seven games against us to, to, to beat us. So, um, let me get to this uh, next screen over here. Let me well, talk about, I'll go, you go know ahead. what? I just want to chime in with this. So, I was sure. just looking to see when, like, the last matchup against – between Philly and Miami. Uh-huh. Um, Harris was hurt. Of course, they're not going to play Mo Bamba. I think Melton is back. And Kelly Oubre is playing well, right? That's your guy. That is. Um, 
but the big thing is Buddy Buddy Heal for me. Like he only mm. played like twelve minutes that game. He missed like six shots. And of course, if Buddy Heal is ineffective and he's coming off the bench, he's gonna be essentially what Dante was at the beginning of the season, right? If he's coming in just to jack up shots and and he he's missing and he's kind of tailed off lately. It's really all about how he plays with Embiid. Like, mm-hmm. does he play with Embiid or does Embiid have to play extra minutes? And let, let's say he plays 35 minutes or something like that. Then you're burning Embiid out. And I really want to see how we match up with, or like the bodies we're going to, sorry, pause. We're going to put against Embiid because you're going to have, and that's why I say Mitch has to be in shape. Mm. Mitch has to has to negate and make Embiid fight for position. And if he shoots a couple of threes, oh, so be it. But you can't give him that lane because he, he has so many up and unders. And then Mitch has to stay out of foul trouble. So it, it's like a catch-22. You know what's crazy about So here's the thing. He's definitely going to get some help, Mitch, that is. Because the last time, not against, not I guess not this season, but I think it was last season. Mm-hmm. He played the 76ers. I remember the game where Embiid had like maybe 20 something, but the Knicks sent thousands of doubles at Joel Embiid to help out Mitch. I want to say it was last year, maybe the year before. So I, I look, we don't want to have Mitchell Robinson in a situation where you're trying to go 1v1. Because again, I think, look, we talked about this last time, his base, when he uses it defensively, is poor. Embiid is all about using his base to abuse you in the post. We don't need a game where Embiid is slowing it down and getting 20 free throws a game. So they're going to send doubles his way. I would, I, I, I'm not saying that you're saying this, but I'm trying to help out Mitchell Robinson as much as possible. I'm going to send the doubles and they kick it out to somebody else. If De, if De'Anthony Melton kills me, you know he's a good three-point shooter. If freaking uh, if Paul Reed ends up getting a shot and he's, he hits five threes a game, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Again, this is, this is a team in, in, the, in, the, in the 76ers. They're not a good three-point shooting team. Mm-hmm. They're just not. So I'm not even going to bet on it. I don't want MB to get in any rhythm. I thought the Knicks did lack in the first game against the 76ers should be the blueprint. Get the ball in Embiid's hands. Make those other guys pay. And as soon as they miss their shot, use the fast break. Use pace. at your Just abuse it. The Sixers could not run with the Knicks. Their legs were dead that game. They tried to play this half court, slow it down, get in B game. And it didn't work. Mm-hmm. Was it starting to miss shots? Tom Thibodeau, even though he's not a pace guy, just run the ragged with the fast break opportunities. And that's the best way. Tire them out. They want to slow this well, down. Yeah, so on. I wanted to, I'm going to like try to <coughs> the stuff that, you know, that's just look at how a defense is. We play the, the passing lanes really well, right? We play up on teams. We, we have this hybrid drop thing that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, where at least with Hartenstein, you know, like he he shows more or less and halfway drops and it, it takes a lot of teams um, off guard. And then I was looking at something with Jalen Brunson. He does like when he gets screened off, he does like a UE to cut off the, the driving lane. And I don't know, it, it, there's so much stuff going on. And I feel like it's going to be a mixed coverage. Mm. Much like I'm trying to describe where it's like sometimes drop and we're just going to play off a little bit and then sometimes we're going to just play up on you. But the reason why I mentioned Mitch, Mitch is all about Mitch pushing him out the paint and making him like exert energy trying to, you know, use those legs, those knees. Because to me, Embiid also is not in like game time shape. I don't feel like he is, but he could score and he could shoot. So... That is the the thing. It's just like how tired can you get them by by the fourth quarter? I don't feel like they have enough scoring throughout the team, and this is why, I, I, like, this is something to talk about in the future uh, or later on. Like, this is our time to strike, so to speak, because Philly has a ton of cap space next year. Mm-hmm. They're gonna tr- Daryl Morey always tweaks his teams to compete. Uh, Miami is in a down year. They may get Dame. Who knows? Giannis is hurt. The Celtics are coached by Joe Mazzula. Say no more. 
Um, you know, and you just go on and on with the rest of the teams. Like Orlando is one year young, you know what I mean? Like, so it's going to take time for everyone to build up. I just see this year as a year to just get as far as possible, apply pressure, try to get into the finals, if not the Eastern Conference finals. But a lot of there are a lot of teams that are weak this year. I agree. I agree. The 76 is definitely one of them. So just mm-hmm. for everybody to see them, like I said, some of the so-called reasons why we should want the 76 is 3-1 and against them. Joel Embiid is hobbled. 37 uh, games played this season. Playoff Embiid is not MVP Embiid. As you can see his stats, they're just not the same at all. He's been in decline the past few years. And last year is probably the, the most upset, even though I'm not 76 is fans, but when they lost to the Celtics, that, that when freaking... Tatum could have hit a couldn't hit a shot in the first half and the third quarter most of it to save his life or some of it let me say the third quarter to save his life and they lost that game game six I think it was and they went on to lose game seven I think after Jimmy Butler ironically would have been perfect for the 76 to keep obviously it didn't happen uh, which anyway because they, they they the funny thing is that they have the same temperament like they want to win. Um, mm-hmm. No, granted, Embiid is just hurt. I've, I've I've never heard of Embiid, despite the fact he has some poor conditioning or had some poor conditioning habits early on. But you never heard of Embiid like slacking. So if you say, "Oh, his performance in the playoffs," no, nah, I just think he tires out a little bit, and teams adjust to him living in a post, and the, then the fouls aren't called as much anymore. So I think that him and and, and Butler would have been perfect, but it is what it is. Um, again, Knicks have the 76ers numbers this season. Knicks have held the 76ers. To two of their lowest field goal outputs this season. Two of their lowest this season. Um, I think it's actually well below the the average. I think they've only allowed 88 points, is it, by the 76ers while... Yeah, they've only allowed 86.5 points per game against 76ers while scoring uh, 104.3 points a game. 17.8 plus differential. Uh, probably one of the highest for the Knicks this season. Uh, just overall, uh, Knicks have shot really well against them, 36.1% from the field in the four games they played them. Uh, and we beat the, the 76ers with a bad Jalen Brunson game as well, too, which which bodes really well. I think it was one of the games where um, I think Josh Hart had like a 20-10 and 10 game as well, too, which he's another guy that if you look at what he did last year for the Knicks in the playoffs, which is putrid, he's a guy that if he could give you those type of games, not 20-10, and 10, let me not say that, but can play solid defense, but also find the open man and assert himself in his in his spots. You know, last year's probably a whole different uh, playoff uh, outlook or playoff whatever run. Um, and yeah, like I said, they're one of the worst three point shooting teams. We talk about the Joe Jai penetration, which kills the Knicks. And the reason why is because teams can typically shoot from the outside. If you can't shoot from the outside, Knicks protect the paint. You're gonna suffer. And I forget what the stat was this season. But I know at one point there's a certain threshold that if a team shot like made 16 threes against us, we typically lost. Like our record was pretty putrid. So if we can mm-hmm. limit this team from taking being at least being efficient from outside, uh, you definitely uh, you have a strong chance against 76ers. And like I said, man, that depth too is just not Buddy strong. Heal and, and um and what's his name Tyrese Maxey. Like once you lock those two up, you, yeah, you really you got it. You know you what's weird got- about Buddy Hill? I felt he had. I don't even know what. I don't know what's happening. Maybe uh, Dave Yerger was right. Buddy Hill, <coughs> I thought his his first year with Indiana had a way more impactful role with that team. Where he was a playmaker, he was running the offense, he's allowed to shoot with the Pacers. Then the second year, kind of like it changed, and I'm seeing that same way with the 76ers now, where. For whatever reason, they don't really trust Buddy Hill to be in that. Play. I don't know if he's he's rubbing uh, pause, if he's rubbing the wrong way. Pause, <laughs> Nick Nurse the wrong way or something like that. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I just thought that first year that he was with Carlisle. Yeah, I thought that he was, it was like, oh, okay, someone truly unlocked it. Do you do you feel the same way? Have you watched enough of Buddy Hill this season to well, kind of? I I hadn't watched much, but <coughs> at the same time, it's like Jeez. Buddy Hill is one of those players like. And we could get into an overall NBA philosophy right now with this because the big thing to me that I've seen, and this is something I've been working on since Frank was here. Um, the NBA is basically moving towards having 
so to speak. Like you can't have just one skill. Oh, mm. I'm a shooter, and that's good enough for me to get minutes. Oh, I'm a defender, and that's good enough. You, that's not gonna cut it. What the what we're seeing here, and you could look at at OG Ananobi as being one of those things. Like he could shoot and play defense, and then he could rebound potentially, and he could play multiple positions. So it's like multifaceted players where like one skill is not good enough to keep you on the court. Hmm. And Buddy Heal really isn't consistent in many areas. So like let's use a different type of shooter or a different type scorer right now to, to compare to. Malik Monk this year added. Oh. Oh. Yes. He's a shooter. He's a scorer. He doesn't play much defense, but he added playmaking for other people. Yep. You know what I mean? So he he had it, when you talk about like or how good are you? Like you got to do multiple things. If you want to give another comparison, a Nick Obi Toppin, his his shot was inconsistent. He couldn't rebound much and he couldn't defend, but he could run a break. He could get out on the break. He was a, a freaking gazelle down the court, but he wasn't good enough to give you more than just a fast break. So, mm. like, that's the one thing that, you know, everyone said, Frank Nilakina, defender, he's going to fit well with Tibbs, barely got any minutes at all, and he's gone. Like, it, it's just, that's not where the NBA is right now, period. Good damn, so you're trying to say that your man Buddy Hill's running himself into the obsolete model of a guard. And I, well, I, I mean, and that's the thing, too, like... Big men are like what we're asking and demanding of big men is changing. Every everything is changing and or we're asking more of players. It's just like corporate America. We're asking more of people to do more jobs and they're laying off people and then the people that because you're you're still here, you gotta do all the work that the other four people, you know, used to do. We're not like spreading the in a basketball context we're not spreading it around like hey you're gonna do this one job you're gonna do that no because like one thing that beat us with trey young you put the team mm. it, you 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 go in the screen and then there's a switch and the person who can't defend a small guard like uh mitchell robinson or something like that on the perimeter because trey young could lull him to sleep and then hit a shot over his head or you get Julius Rang Randall in a switch, and he can't defend. So now it puts Trey Young at ad advantageous because the, the pick and roll sometimes calls for the switch to defend it and not give up easy buckets. Hmm. So it's like you have to, you can't just sit here and say, hey, you can't play good defense. I'm going to try to hide you. We can't hide Jalen Brunson. Jalen mm -hmm. Brunson is actually defending very well and, and switching, and he's doing a lot of things that Trey Young don't do. You know what I mean? Like, it's not the same. Yeah, it, it, he's small guard, doesn't defend as well as o, OG Ananobi, but damn, I'll be damned if Jalen Brunson doesn't defend his ass off. Yeah, he tries. And one thing I do like about Jalen Brunson, and that's it's really disciplined. Him and IQ, I thought last year, did extremely well. They played at... That bad passing lane really well on like yeah. the opposite side. Typically, when guys are trying to make that pass, I've seen him, Dante this year, but yeah, him and IQ definitely. always make that steal, right? And the thing yeah, about definitely. is that with, with J like you said, Jim Brunson is not going to stop you, but he's nope. not going to be a total zero. Where on Trey Young, nope. I mean, when the zero. team is putting energy to hide you on Game defense, zero. <laughs> and that's another thing too. You're starting to zero. see. I mean, you're starting to see the the, the whispers getting louder. I seen another report now that uh, they, they they said that he could be traded as soon as uh, this next upcoming no, season. Which I said the Trey Young system does not work. But no, nope. when you're trying to salvage it now, let me ask you this: You think Nick Nurse? I'm not sure how much control he has, but you know Daryl Morey is Daryl Morey. Can you see the 76ers trying to swing a trade for Trey Young to pair him up with Embiid? Because they're not letting this Embiid thing go, which I actually think no, was the wrong way not. to go. They're not. Um, but see, like. What what's best for Embiid is to get good wings and then another big man that could at least back him up. Mm. Atlanta is a good team to sw to to swing a trade with because they got they got um the kid out of USC. 
They got Capella, who's getting older, who is a um, Daryl Morey, you know, guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but they got Biggs, and then they got Jalen Johnson coming up, right? Yes, Jaylen. So they're not going to trade Jalen Johnson, but everyone else should be on the table. DeJounte yeah. Murray could go on the table. Like, I don't think Bogey. DeJounte Murray um, would, would fit with, uh, what's his name? But, I mean, they, they need to clean some stuff up, and then... Tobias Harris falls off, you know, con- contract falls off. And that's why I say we need to strike while the iron is hot because they could re-up and get something very special next year and beyond. But, um, you, yeah. As in the 70s, you think the 76 could get something special? I don't next know. There, I don't know. There, You said they have a lot of picks, right? Let me see. Uh, I don't know about picks, but they do have um, cap space. Oh, I'm sorry, so you said cap space. My bad, my bad. Cap space, yeah. They could swing a trade with that cap space. But a lot and of that, cap Mori is... doesn't care about his draft picks, period. Yeah, they have two. Uh, 2024, they have uh, Chicago or the Pelicans. That's a second-round pick. That's nothing. 26, they don't have a pick in 25. So they have their first-round pick. They have two first-round picks in 2026. They have none in 27. So, yeah, they're yep. kind of 28. They have two first round picks. Yeah, they're kind of. Uh... They're kind of. They're slim pickings, but yeah, at the same time, the like, they, I know they, they've been talking a lot this year about, hey, next year, we got, we got a cap, we got cap room. We got a cap space. We got a max. Who could we get? Let's get a max. You know what I mean? So, who knows? Fair enough. All right, so before you move on, man, or I guess as you move, excuse me. And just want to. Oh, go, go, go. I, I do want to ask you, like, what do you think about between Philly or, or Miami? Like, which one would you prefer? The the I just want to see the Knicks get as far as possible. In me says I would take the 76ers just because I think that. All right, so that that's it. But then. The I want us to prove that we're as strong as our regular season record says, which is actually mm. not the easiest to prove for a lot of teams who aren't, you know, you know the Warriors or this one of these, you know, dominant you know, teams like that. I yeah. would love to play the, uh, the the Heat. I think that's like a mental hurdle, right? Where it's like we can beat this team that for some reason last year, if I want to say if you look on paper, but a team that we should have at least gotten to a game seven and we didn't. That, you know, the Jalen Brunson era, which I think in my head was understandable because every round that team besides R.J. Barrett couldn't shoot the basketball, makes a turnover. Mm -hmm. I just think it's one of those things where it's like if you beat the Heat, it kind of like it gives you that extra confidence to say, hey, we can. Now, granted, if the Knicks somehow get to the championships or the ECF, you know, without playing the Heat, obviously, they'll still be good. But, you know, it's just one of those things that I think can embolden this team a little bit more. You know, guys like Josh Hart, if you go back to the playoffs last year against the Heat, he was terrible. I mean, air balls and hesitating to shoot, he looked like a shell of himself. And, you know, I, I, I try to stay humble with these guys. You know, I tell people, you know, stay humble when Josh is, you know, talking trash on the play. I'm like, hey, just stay humble because I remember what you did against the Heat. And you that same cockiness did not show up in your in your game. Uh, so for me, I mean, look, on the surface, obviously it would be the, the 76ers, but the Knicks is good. I don't want it to be a fluke 50-win team. Like, 50 wins means a lot to me. Second seed in the Eastern Conference means a lot to me. If this team was to go out and prove that, hey, Jalen Brunson is that guy, Tom Thibodeau is legitimately the top three best coaches in the league, the Knicks are a team on the incline, and we don't even have the so-called the two magical stars that are supposed to appear with Brunson or whatever, the extra stars, to, that we're, mm-hmm. we're, as, we're that dangerous of a team, then, yeah, you, could, you should be able to beat the heat, this Heat squad. And so, to me, I mean, either way, but... On the so, surface, uh, I'll take basically those. Basically, you're just saying a first round knockout is absolutely not acceptable. No, it's not. Not even close. Not even close. I know you're missing Randall, but and I know you're gonna kill me for this. I have to agree with your man Eddie House. And I've said this before. The offense just looks a lot more fluid without Julius Randall. That's no disrespect to him. Okay. Julius Randall is a solid player. Okay. But he is not solid. He's not that good of a player to be. He would say gravity. He's the orbit, right? On the, where the ball has to be in his hands. And people kill me for this and say, "Oh, why you like Sabonis?" Blah blah. Because Sabonis, 
Uh, doesn't he's need trash, to... but that's fine. Go ahead. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. So bonus does not need the ball in his hands to be uh, impactful. He can set screens. He's a system guy. He's, he's first of all, system agnostic. He fit in any system. Right? He's not a great three point chest. This is all he knock offensively. And but defensively. It, okay, he's not and, and, and is Randall good defensively? I mean he's a better defensive but I trust Randall better on defense than Sabon. You're comparing lemonades to Boston baked beans, bro. It's not actually that's different, but you're comparing freaking uh, I'll take Boston baked beans if you're talking about Randall and Boston baked beans. <laughs> There's only but so much you could drink. Well, Randall know, is not. Pause, 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 pause. Are you really gonna sit up here and say your man Randall? And look, Ace of King said, "Watch your FM." <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I gotta watch my mouth. Yeah. While I'm this I'm this dude, Ace, Ace didn't say nothing all night. So touch us all. Ace is not a good defender. He's not a good defender. Neither, neither, are, neither, Randall, neither of them are. Better, I've seen better defense oh, from Randall than from. Oh my gosh! Now we're gonna start. Don't put. It. See the thing is, Randall could defend one on one. He just can't defend with screens and all that kind. Of, like don't, don't do <laughs> that. If it's one on one, he could, he could handle himself. But ah! it's like, oh, oh my gosh, yo! You could tell me Sabonis can. I didn't say Sabonis can. Oh, okay. But uh, Randall can't... What? Randall, Are I've seen better one-on-one -on -one defense from Randall. Wow. From, from wow. Sabonis. Wow. What are these words? Just uh, saying. What are, what are these words? Uh, those words are just truth. Yo. Yo, these preposterous words. Hey, yo. But with Randall, to, to Eddie House's point, Randall has to have the ball to be effective. I don't think he's that type of player. And it's no disrespect to him. But do you think that if Randall was here, let's be honest. Now, granted, people are going to get extra touches just because Randall's not here. So take that out of the equation if you can. And I'm going to give you pressure, too, because I think pressure Chua was getting a lot of touches because iHeart wasn't fully healthy and stuff like that. So I'll give you that. But do you think this team runs on a cylinder or in, in a space that it does in terms of everybody's getting the ball, the rotational passing, the off-ball moving, by the way, where on the weak side, not saying this is a Tom Thibodeau staple, but... There's typically somebody cutting from the weak side to get a pass from Brunson, get a pass from Josh Hart, even to get a pass from Don DiVincenzo. Do you think that this offense will be, it's not prolific, but will be as in a relative well, sense, as expansive, well, in a relative sense, please don't, not an absolute, in a relative sense to what we have before, do you think it would be as, as this expansive or this as a uh, rhythmic if Randall was here? And you have to wait in the corner. You have to wait at the at the, the wing for his pass from the in the post. Okay, let oh, me just say this. He's gonna make excuses. All right. No, no, this is not an excuse. So I just want to <laughs> make sure I say this for like you got to understand my philosophy most of the time. I am not one of these groupies for ball movement. I don't care about ball movement half as much as most Knicks fans or a lot of people that we talk to on this show. Um, I believe ball movement works up until it doesn't work, and then someone's got to make a bucket over somebody else's hand stretched out on defense. So that means one-on-one -on -one play. Give me a guy that could get a bucket on his own and could carry his carry offense. And could also play make for others any day of the week, which is what Randall can do. <sighs> if Randall was here, we would have had a better bench production. And and also, too, Jalen Brunson would have had to work as hard. I don't like high usage players or players that have over a 28% usage rate, which is what Jalen Brunson has, even with the ball movement. I would like to see it come down. I would like to see the ball spread, like someone else to be able to create a double team like Randall or anyone else. It could be Paul George for all I care. But don't tell me that what we have going on right now could not happen with Randall here because Randall could, he was playing well and he was spreading the ball around when he, before he got hurt fatally against Miami. I think Randall was playing very well. He got hurt on a fast break play, which the fast break has it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's that not do that. Randall got hurt on a play too. where I wouldn't necessarily call it a fast break. The ball was pushed up. But it your was man Randall. One on three. 
Randall had an opportunity. To, no, he did no. So, two on three or something. Brunson like that. was wide that. open in the court. This one told about your man Randall. Okay, no offense to Randall. So, okay. I'm not happy he, he got hurt. But why he's was a, he wide open? You, you tell Jalen me, Brunson was wide, was wide open in the okay, corner. Why was he wide open? Why was he wide open? Wasn't it a fast break? It was a fast break. It was. It, it, it. All right. It was a slow break. How about it? You happy now? <laughs> oh, damn, man. Like, it, it's, it's a fast break. <laughs> My dick is getting fast. It was no. Bam wasn't in the picture. Oh. No defenders wasn't in the picture. Like, it was Jaime Hawkins <laughs> alone by himself. Randall could have passed <sighs> to the corners and sprayed. It was a freaking fast break. Your man Randall had Jalen Brunson wide. Oh, first of all, right. first of all, you're up big. The game is done. There was no need for you no. to take that shot, Mister. Don't know. This is same Randall where we. Okay, hold on. Wait. No, no, no. Don't. don't. See, this is what. What? I, what? This is where Ace is gonna back me up. And Ace, I'm not in New York, <laughs> but I want you to jack. <laughs> um, oh boy, up here. Because this, this is where people make stupid, like stupid claims. That, yeah, wow. But let me let me just say these these few words and you can say uh, what are these words crap. <laughs> number one, number one, there have been more thirty point losses this year or teams that have thirty point leads and they lose that lead this year than any other time in NBA history. The Miami Heat did not take their starters out. Tibbs matched their starters with our starters. We were up big, yes, but he was going up for a dunk or a layup to put the game away against a rookie that was up and coming against Miami Heat. If Randall had dunked that ball on um, Jaime Hawkins, which is what I think he originally wanted to do, we would have all be screaming from the roof freaking tops and said, we got a team that is now 13, at the time it would have been like 13 or 14 to two losses or something like that with, since the OG Ananobi trade. And we are flying high. And he just dunked on a Miami Heat head. Context of that play happening, I don't mind it. But if you want to tell me that you care about well, he, he didn't have to do that play. No, he was trying to put emphasize that, hey, we conquered Miami this year. That's what was going on. <sighs> well, let me say something. Thank you, Gail Barry, first before I move on. Thank you, Gail Barry, for the $10 super chat. It says, love you, Gmo. Great takes. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much for the super chat, man. God bless. Um, he didn't make a good take just now. I don't know why you give him that. Oh, no, I, was, I always make. I make excellent. I make some of the best takes. Anyway. I just don't listen. You know what I'm saying. Anyway, um, and by the way, Alvarado's uh, Anthony uh, Jose Alvarado just got hurt stepping into. Oh, he's he's fine now. But uh, uh, Lakers are up eight. by nine, eighty nine to eighty in the uh, the playing game. Eight, you just tell me how how much it costs to put the hit out on this. Dude. Yo, so, here's the thing. <laughs> I don't care about the symbolic dunk on my. I just care about give me the high. Like when some of these guys. The, the, the game, like, you just have to dribble out the clock. And so you see a guy just, hey, he takes that dumbass shot. Even if it goes, I'm just like, dog, just hold the freak. There's no need for you to do that. You mess up more times than not. And again, I'm not happy or I'm not even trying to overly criticize Randall. But mm -hmm. I remember that play vividly. If you pass it to Brunson in the corner, the game was really out of hand. It was done, right? Miami kept the stars in there for whatever reason, but they were going half speed. They were done with the game. Randall, you pass up to Brunson, the game is done. You don't I don't feel like Jaime Hawkins was going half speed. That whole they was they were finito. Jaime Hawkins, if you want to kill Jaime Hawkins, let's be honest. You want your rookies to step up and take no, the charge. I agree with that part. Oh, you yeah, yeah, I, I agree with what Jaime Hawkins did. He he's a rookie trying to prove himself to a tough nosed coach. Right. I don't care about that part. I'm saying like they didn't take their starters out. Tibbs didn't take his starters out. We matched them all game long. That one play, Julius Randle was trying to emphasize. Like, I, man, if he had connected on that, and then we would be talking about Randle as a freaking legend. Randle just would left we? December. For, for yes. a game against my Would we really? Yes, we would because he scored a game win against Miami. He actually played well inside um, the play-in tournament. Yes, we lost against Miami while he was hurt. But now we got OG Ananobi. 
he just came off December where he averaged like 30-something points per game. He was flying high, and he was feeling healthy again. Like, the guy had a lot to feel good about in that moment, and he just took it overboard and tried to dunk it on dude, on dude and switch back to a layup, and they freaking fell on his shoulder. Like, I, I don't care about it. Uh, I understand the psychology of what happened. This guy, man, your, your excuses for it's ridiculous. We we'll, we'll get hey, to Randall. We'll you hate to... Randall, like I so don't hate. I swear on my life, it's, I it's, don't. It's really getting disturbing. It's I, I, like I, you're, you're like a <laughs> young restless villain. Like, it's, it's, it's disturbing. It's disturbing. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't. I hate think her. God is smiting you. <laughs> 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 yo, yo, oh. pray for, for Gmo lungs. Bro. Oh my it's gosh, bro. I can't laugh because every time I laugh, then I get stuck with phlegm. Yo, oh, my list is idiot no more, like man. The sickest dude on the planet, yo. Uh. If, you, if, we, if I was there, I would have started IV uh. on you and bring an IV bag or something. I'm, yo, bro, I'm telling oh. you, man. You, you know what it is? IV, I got IV bars up there. No, we don't have no IV bars out here, bro. We actually. Oh, really? We actually have fun like normal people on like uh, freaking. No, 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 no. Uh, see, see. IV bars? Yeah, IV bar. When you go to a bar and they hit you with IV because you, you're drunk or uh, you're dehydrated the night before? Well, okay. One, if you get like IV fluid and stuff like that. Number uh, one, some people just get like vitamins and stuff like that. So it, it acts up faster. Right. And then the IV bar itself, it helps you um, sober up very fast. So, like, if it might take you four hours to sober up, it'll just take you two. Right, because you're just getting hydrated from, was it, potassium, yeah. whatever's in a, uh, yeah. what's it? Well, just and, regular food, yeah. And it's a, a bar where you, like, like it's like, hey, I'm coming to a yeah. bar, and they hook you up? Yeah, they start an IV on you, hook you up. You start what the? Stuff, I've, yeah. I've never heard of that in New York. Okay, all right. I should start one. I, I, I know a kid, I, not a kid, I know a guy I used to work with who used to, he had a, um, I think he had some friends in nursing. That he would get hooked up to. I so I've heard of that. That he, you know, get be hungover, get hooked up to an IV that Sunday. He's good. I've mm -hmm. I've never heard of a that, that. There's probably some type of regulation that probably stops you. Some weird malpractice or not malpractice, but some weird. Uh, I mean, all you're doing is giving fluid. It's not like you 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 don't need a prescription for fluid. That's true, but you have needles and stuff and all that jazz. I, I, I don't know. Alcohol, you clean the skin and you give it. Anyway, whatever. I'm not trying to. Like, <laughs> no, you should open it up. That's a great idea. You should. You should think about that in New York. Yeah, um, so I know you all get drunk out there, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah, Please, they do. They're degenerates. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just want to cover this real quick. Miami Heat. We've talked about a lot of this already, but why we went to Miami Heat again? Next to one against the Miami Heat this season. I think we had like a like a double digit comeback against them. I think it was the first game. Obviously, the last game we lost, but again, 2-1 against them uh, this season, which is not the easiest. Jalen Brunson, to me, some Miami Heat, remember just the last few years, uh, uh, well, I guess before Brunson was even here, but the Miami Heat with the double teams they've been able to send against us. I still remember that game where uh, your man made the uh, R.J. Barrett try to take the final leap against Jimmy Butler. Remember that game? I think it was uh, Derrick Rose's first game with the Knicks. Tom Thibodeau inexplicably didn't play De uh, Derrick Rose for a big swatch of time in the fourth quarter. And guys like IQ kind of struggled against Miami Heat's double teams this season with Jalen Brunson. Just they just it's been it's been yeah. neutralized. Like they just can't yeah. do it. Uh, even when they do send the double teams, I Heart and Josh Hart did a great job of kind of breaking uh, the doubles, flashing that to the foul line, and from there they attack or kick it out to the outside guys in the corner. Um, last year's playoff team man, that, that depth is faded. Like I said, when you have to go out there and get. Two, three guys. Uh, sorry, to get one guy to kind of fill in the offensive production of two, three guys on your team. I don't know. It's just something about your role players understanding their roles, rhythm of the offense. Again, Max Drews, uh, even though Duncan Robinson is still there. Uh, but Max Drews, Duncan Robinson, uh, <coughs> Gary Vincent, uh, Kaelin Martin, who's still there. There was just a this is a, just a better rhythm in terms of getting that pass at the at the left wing. Uh, mm -hmm. Duncan Robinson with the handles from Bam Adebayo. Uh, it, it, there's something to say for that versus, you know, Terry Scary. Scary Terry's just taking a ball now. Um, and I, I don't know. For me, I might be. This might be a uh, conjecture, but I just feel like sometimes when that happens, you kind of see that some of your key players, like you know, Jimmy Butler is getting older and things are a little stagnant, and you're just like, ah, let's just kind of take the cheap route to scoring versus, 
you know, let's go and get the role players. And, and the Heat don't have, look, to their credit, they don't have the greatest amount of assets and stuff. So when people are like, oh, they're going to get hard in a deal, it's like, eh. It's probably not as doable as some people have seen it. But again, just their depth is just not as strong as it was to me uh, as it was last year. Uh, like I uh, put up there, the Heat, uh, their shooting, even though it wasn't great last year, but it's moved from 17th to 19th this year in three-pointers made. Uh, more reliable offense this year by the Knicks. Again, Dante DiVincenzo versus, you know, even though RJ Bat had a good shooting percentage on the field, he struggled from shooting. But just look at some of the guys. IQ couldn't shoot. Grimes couldn't shoot. He had the shoulder injury. Josh Hart didn't want to shoot. Uh, I, I don't think you're going to get the, get, the, get the same Josh Hart you did last year. But then also Don DiVincenzo, Maz McBride, who for some reason has found uh, the freaking uh, the keys to heaven regarding his shot off the dribble, especially off the dribble, which doesn't make any sense to me because he literally, well, I guess because he shoots like Larry Bird a little bit from the top, you know, from behind oh his head. Oh, my God. No, I didn't say he's, I'm just saying the form. I'm not saying he shoots no. it like, like, I'm just saying the form. Right, I, I'm okay. not going to go that crazy myself. Okay. He ain't no Larry yeah. Bird. Right, um, cool. Please continue. And then, like I said, more volatility, scary Terry Rozier and Tyler Hero. And then OJ Anubi. Now, I put the question marks of defense on OJ Anubi because when I actually looked up the numbers with OJ Anubi on Jimmy Butler, they actually weren't that good, uh, which is actually pretty scary. Uh, if I could find the damn stats I had, but yeah, the stats actually, just. I wouldn't want um, Jimmy against, against uh, Ananobi. Or Ananobi against Jimmy, to be honest. I would want Josh Hart to play him. And, oh. again, the system is different now. So, Were you going to say OG on, on Bam? I want OG Roman. Okay. Because, and again, like, even on the perimeter, <laughs> like, with Duncan Robinson or something like that, OG's arms are so freaking long. Mm. Do I have to pause that one? No, I'm no, talking about his that's arms. fine. Arms, no, I, I, okay. I, that's fine. I, I, I don't know the body part. Pause, pause, um, pause rule. <laughs> so, um, please just correct me every once in a while. Okay, no problem. That's fine. Arms. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you say third arm, you're good. Go ahead, arms. All right. <sighs> All right. I have the correct appendage. So. <laughs> All right. We're getting close. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> oh my god! Uh, I, hate, I hate our society. Anyway, yeah, so it's trash. Um, <laughs> yeah. So like his arms are so long. So I know you could play the passing lanes and cut off passes towards like Duncan Robinson and stuff. But I just wouldn't want him to chase Duncan Robinson. Mm -hmm. And then if he's playing off, um, like the third person, because we drop Hartenstein, but we allow OG to stay in the picture as the second person who, who helps the helper. Mm. And, like, when OG is in that position, he gets a ton of steals. Yeah. And then that starts our break-off. So I want to see us do that. And then also, too, I want OG more than anything else. If, he, if we do play Miami, if he brings his offensive game that he's been showing lately, done deal, bro. Like, mm. because he's been, he's been getting that mid-range shot off. Way more uh, efficient than your, your guy. Uh, I don't know. His mid range shot. He had maybe like one <laughs> the past few games. He's cut his way. Well, he's doing well. He's moving well without the ball. Oh. Uh, all right. All right. Okay. I can't say mid range because I've seen a few where he tried. I forget who he tried to post up and he almost fell on his feet. And he's had nah, a few I'm turnovers where. I'm saying like a, like one, two dribble, little move <laughs> in and out, and then. Put up the <laughs> I'm talking about the mid-range jumper and Josh Hart. If he, I just want him to take mid-range jumpers. I don't even care about Josh Hart shooting threes as much. I, here's the thing, Josh Hart. He's annoying because he doesn't have a bad shot now. No, he doesn't. I don't mind him taking like the threes. Like he actually went on a streak this season where literally like the first three he took, he was he would make it. But uh, that's kind of falling off. But he just doesn't like to take shots and spots. Like I've seen him give him a, a lot of open threes. One shot I'd like Josh Hart to take, especially if he has a guy like Ty Hero or whatever, I would love for him to take that little mid-range shot where he drives into, like, like right inside the foul line and then does a little mm -hmm. fadeaway jumper, which I, I, I'm not going to sit here and say it's automatic, but it's been solid as hell this season. And yeah, one thing with the, against the Heat, the Knicks need to do, that, they do, that they've done all season or in the regular seasons of, like, to the past two seasons, pick the weak defenders. 
Say what you yeah. want. I know R.J. Barrett gets killed. But R.J. Barrett, when he ran that reading react, we had, I know they lost, too. Lost a close game. But he had 46 points against them last year. You had IQ, had a monster game. I think it was IQ and... Um, Ah, I forget the other guy who played well. I think I think it was one of the last games last year. Uh, IQ. Uh, whenever they, they, they just picked out Max Struess or picked out, um, uh, not Tyler Hero. It was Max Struess. And why am I forgetting the other weak-ass defender on that team? Um, Was not it Caleb. Gabe or? No, no, Caleb. not Gabe. It wasn't Caleb Martin. Um, No, not Caleb. Why am I forgetting well, it? It wasn't Struess. It was Struess. Oh, and Duncan Robinson. Sorry. I can't, I can't remember. Oh, Robinson. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. Duncan Robinson and Struess. Uh, it, man, absolutely murdered. Someone said, you two. Oh, they said only one person in the chat. I don't know what's happening. You, I'm seeing all you guys in the chat, so I don't know what's happening to YouTube. Uh, I have no idea what's going on, but I see you guys, I guess. Uh, I don't know what's happening, but YouTube is, is bugging out right now. But I see a whole bunch of people typing in the chat, so I don't know what it, what's happening to Coach Sire. Um, Thank you. They said YouTube is, is is tripping on every channel. I guess I, I don't know what's happening, but uh, I appreciate you. Uh, but yeah, I, I will. I need to see the next pick, out, pick those guys out. Yeah, I see a bunch of people type. I don't know what the hell is YouTube. They said the chat rate is seven, but there's one concurrent viewer. But you guys have all been here before. What? I don't see any crazy new people here, so I don't know what YouTube is doing. Uh, but thank you, sire. But yeah, again, pick out the mismatches and attack them. Just bloody freaking attack like we have in the past. And think too, man. Don't be scared of it. I know spam is a great. Protected in the pain not in, near the rim itself, but Knicks cannot allow him to dictate the game uh, offensively. I've seen too many yeah. times this year against big, against solid bigs, even against uh, 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 this guy, um, Wimbayama, who again is an alien. And I heart, remember the game I heart maybe missed his first two floaters, and then he'd have open opportunities yeah. where he could have taken another floor, and he just paused up, picked up the dribble, and looked to pass it out. And he's right underneath. And when by Yama is probably maybe a, a half a second, maybe a full second late anyway to the ball, but you know he put the fear of God him, so scared, scared yeah, scared him. So I just I just don't want this team to be fearful of Bam out of bio. I'm hoping the refs see Bam for what he is, which is an extremely dirty player. Mm-hmm. But it it may not you know they may not see it, but you can't be scared of Bam. You can't let them play the head I'm games. I'm scared of the way they play, man. Like they played '90s dirty basketball to me. Yes, and the did. funny part was when we played them last year, I was in chats and stuff, and they were saying how we played dirty. I'm like, bro, look at Bam's legs. <laughs> He's like, pause. He spreads his legs and, and freaking when he screens and just sets these wide screens. It's just dirty. Anyway, said, I hate that team. I'm sorry. Ace just said, are you do? Oh, okay, okay. That was earlier too. I'm sorry. It's all this happened with you two. Hold on. Let me check. But no, Vam okay. is extremely. Who did he just hurt the other day by doing that? Uh, did he, he hurt somebody else too? Jeez. He stuck out his foot and they tripped. Yeah, even Dope Soul. Something is happening because Dope Soul, I know she gets a lot of people in her chats and they're saying she only got three people watching, which is not true. Uh, so no, that's not true. Just ignore yeah. ignore, ignore YouTube. Something is I happening. Got three. Uh, y'all may have to just refresh, guys. No, even she's saying, she's saying that because uh, Coach Sire, she's a Coach Sire, man. He's like a freaking. Uh, He's a free. I don't know what you call him. Who's the dude that told everybody that the uh, the the the, the red coats are coming? Oh, I can't remember their name. But uh, yeah, uh, y'all point out too. Coast? Yeah, th- thank you for yeah. that, Coach Sire. You you, like you helping Yankee everybody. Doodle? Yeah, but who's the dude that told everybody the red coats are coming? Even Godfrey, Godfrey, right now, who gets hundreds of viewers, they're saying only six people are watching. Yeah, just ignore YouTube. Something is happening, bro. Now they saying only four people watching on Godfrey. This guy gets hundreds of people in his chats. He gets hundreds of people. Let me see. Participants? Yeah, yeah. all right. Whatever, whatever. Just, just ignore this thing, man. Something's happening on YouTube. Anyway, um, yeah, those are my points on the Miami Heat, man. Any other points on the Miami Heat no, besides no, Ben being dirty as hell? It. That's it. Just dirty as hell. I hate them. Where do you put Spol... Because Spolstra... If you... Can... Who do you think Spolstra actually does better with? A team... <coughs> A team like you had last year... And please exclude the exclude the LeBron and Dwayne Wade years. Does Spolstra do does he do better with a, a team like a Jimmy Butler, a Bam, and a bunch of role players, or a team full of a bunch of stars? And I know it's gonna be tough because you probably you're naturally gonna reference the uh, Dwayne Wade, LeBron. Because again, with him, I wouldn't want like you said. I don't want to see Spolstra in a. 
a seven game because I, I, I think he's one. Of the, he's an excellent game planner. Um, I think so too. He gets Sorry. guys in their roles and like mm-hmm. like you brought to me where he he picks at what you like what you're naturally good at like what you're good yeah. at from high school like and I read about that and I was like wow Nick was actually you know first it is pretty insightful in this so thanks for for pointing that out but he's one of those trench coaches that you just don't want to see like well. You know what I hate about Eric Spolstra, and at least the evaluation of Eric Spolstra is a season like this. It's he's not exactly wowing the world this season. You know what I mean? Like I could sit here and say, uh, "Freaking Thibodeau did better than him this season." Mm. <laughs> There's yeah. nothing special about what Spolstra is doing this year. Um, but then you get to the playoffs, and it might be something different. You know right. what I mean? So. I get it. I think, I think he's a. I don't know. I, I don't want to sit here and say, um, like one is better than the other. But he's had. I put it to you like this, and this is why I don't understand some some of the love to Spolstra. Look at Tom Thibodeau's record, and I think he only had two lottery seasons. Hmm. Spolstra has had lottery seasons where they end up picking Bam, uh, Tyler. No, no, Tyler, Tyler was a, was no, Tyler, it. Was Tyler? Yeah, I think Tyler Hero was like a 13th overall pick. Yeah, or something like that in that range. It was late. Um, and then they, they, what was the other dude? Um, Michael Beasley. They've had bad seasons. Like mm-hmm. it, and it's not like they don't go all in for good for for a good team, and then Pat Riley hadn't really done much to like clean his books up to where they had talent on the team. They traded their last last good pick so that they could get um, Terry Rozier. So I don't feel like um, Pat Riley is doing Spolstra any any um any good. I think there's a big dropping of the ball from from the front office mm. because they should have more talent on this team. I they know should. they went after um, Dame, but even Dame, I don't know. the The last two two guys they got were Kyle Lowry. They cheated to get that right, <laughs> and Ooh. then they got Terry Rozier, and they gave up a a, a pick for that, like. Whoop de freaking do. I mean that if you tell me that that's what you give to Tibbs, then you're gonna have a freaking Kimba year, right? It's that's not good enough. So I, I, I do feel like he's a good coach, but he, he gets shortchanged by the front office. Mm. I do think Jaime's gonna be a player, but I don't disagree with you. Yeah, they should have had a lot good. they should have had a lot more to show for in terms of this young talent being here. Yeah. Um and a, they've struck goal in like Kendrick Nunn was a second round pick or like a very the very last pick if I'm not mistaken. Um, they had some a bunch of undrafted guys that have hit, whoopty freaking do. But there's a lot of talent in the league that they missed out on. They have, they have. So let me get to before we close out, man. Uh, if you guys have heard, Jalen Brunson not picked for. The uh, Team USA, here's the list of guys. Kawhi Leonard also being added. LeBron James, Steph Curry. Yeah. Excuse me. Kevin Durant, Joel Embiid, Jason Tatum, Devin Booker, Kawhi Leonard, like I said, Anthony Davis, Anthony Edwards, Drew Holiday, Bam Adebayo, and Tyrese Halliburton, of all people. <laughs> uh, do you think that, now obviously there's certain players who just fit better with the Team USA, you know, Tyrese, they probably look at it as a guy who's just going to feed players and, you know, he's he's not going to be, even though that doesn't actually make sense, but he's not going to, I guess, be looking for shots. They just wanted to get to their key wings and bigs. Um, do you think Jalen Brunson got snubbed in all this? I know he, he said that he didn't care or he was focused on the playoffs, but I know it does have to sting a little bit, man. You can't, no one can sit up here and say that you don't want, the honor to play for Team USA on the biggest stage in the Olympics. Um, do you think he got snubbed? Do you think Team USA went about the wrong way? Obviously, how they lost in the FIBA games this uh, past summer probably put a damper in his in the perception on his game. Uh, what, what do you think? What do you make uh, of the situation? 
I feel like this year the Team USA thing is was always going to be like all the big names are going to play anyway. So I didn't see this year or this season happening for Jalen Brunson, period. Mm. I knew a lot of other players said that they were going to play in the Olympics but not the World Games um, or the whatever the World Cup was last year, right? So when you start talking about LeBron's going to play, LeBron's like, he's fucking, sorry, he's freaking old <laughs> as hell. You know what I mean? Like, he's good, not denying he's good. But come on, like, how many more Olymp- Olympics is he going to um, continue in? This is way beyond. Um, and then you talk about there's a lot of players that could be considered redundant, so to mm. speak. Devin Booker and, you know, and others. And then Hall- Halliburton pause offers size and he, he gives you a chance to have more defense, so to speak. Devin Booker is still a little bit taller. There's no no guys Jalen Brunson's height at, mm. by by the names that you call. So it's a bunch of big wings. Um, you said Kawhi is playing. Kawhi is playing. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Like I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, he's I, not I gonna know. play there. I mean, come on, come on. I, like, what what are we doing here? I don't you know. know. I, mean? I don't know why Kawhi, Kawhi said that. Kawhi, right? And don't get me wrong. Now, knock on wood, this is actually Kawhi's most healthy season in a long time. Yeah, but, but he looks. That sound like he's there for a good time, not a long time, bro. Like, yeah, he don't look too kosher, bro. I saw the last. Well, I seen a few games from this season, and mm. I, I I love Kawhi Leonard's game, bro. But uh, um, love it too. I would yeah. love to send OG to go work out with him, but no. OG, oh, OG, I th- my bad. I'm thinking OB, but yeah, OG and Ubi. I don't. Know. I get. Yeah, Kawhi would be a good, a good player for him to kind of. You know, work out with an emulate, but yeah, Kawhi. I look. I just think that Jalen Brunson. One, I think it's gonna fuel him. It, it, Jalen Brunson is one of those guys. He just feeds off dark energy for whatever reason. He just gets dark got energy. down his whole career, and he's played out of his mind. Um, I think that the team you say team they put out with the FIBA games. I don't want to put all the blame on him per se, but I, I, look, he didn't he didn't wow anybody, and obviously losing and not win the championship. Uh, you know, it just kills your perception or the perception behind you. But to say Tyrese Halliburton, I'm sorry. I've watched Halliburton with those Indiana Pacers, especially before the uh, play, uh, the uh, in season tournament, tournament or uh, through the in season tournament. And I'm sorry, he was fishing for assists. Him and Miles Turner, the games he'd have 19, 20 assists. But if you saw they got the assist, it was almost like the Rondo thing where he wouldn't want to score or make the you know hockey pass or whatever and just let someone else operate. It was him and Miles Turner just passing back to each other to see, okay, can I get this guy open? Can I get the guy over here open? It's, it was cheap. And I like Halliburton as a player. He's a, he's a solid player. I like him a lot. But over Brunson, I, I don't know. It is what it is. So I guess maybe it's just a they want their – they want the, you know, Anthony Edwards. They want Kevin Durant. They want those guys, those guys to kill. But those guys are also getting older too. Kevin Durant, as much as I, I like him as a talent – is he the same oh. dominant Kevin Durant of yesteryear? I, I'm sorry, I don't yeah, think so. Uh, he's not. He's not as dominant. He's still pretty daggone good, and he's very good. Than, very good. He's still top twenty. Uh, I'll say he's top fifteen, top twelve. Okay. Same thing so, with LeBron. I still see the same thing. I, no, I would uh, rather see young players take take over. Uh, LeBron. Still, uh, LeBron's not top twelve for you. Top twelve? Yeah. Uh, top twelve. Okay, name me your top twelve. Okay, who am I top twelve? SGA. Number one. Number one. I, I, I just say I just say any order, okay. but I, it's not <laughs> okay, any. Okay. I'm just uh, Jalen Brunson, SGA, uh, Anthony Edwards. Uh, I can't. I don't want to put one by Yama up there yet. Yeah, Jokic. Uh. Booker, uh, uh, Tatum. Okay, that's six, right? Uh, I'm just, and I'm just saying again. I'm just saying names. Don't, don't kill me, guys. Uh, damn, what I put you? 
Not sure. Oh, Steph Curry. I'm bugging out. I'm sorry. Steph Curry. Uh, mm-hmm. What is that? Seven? Mm-hmm. Did I say Anthony Edwards yet? Yeah. I said Anthony Edwards. Uh, this is getting hard. That's this. This is the point where it was like, I just be forget. I, it's also to my memory. I just be forgetting names because I, I was like, oh, Steph Curry. Like I put Steph Curry that that late. Uh, okay. I put I put Jokic already. Okay. And that's eight. I got. Yeah. I don't want to put Dame up there yet. I know there's someone else I'm missing. Dame is not even in my top twenty. Oof. 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 What other teams am I forgetting? Deer Fox? Why your boy um uh, Sabonis is not in there? Yeah, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, Giannis? Oh, okay. right. thank you, Giannis. No, Giannis, thank you, Ben. Why Giannis, don't I forget it? That's eight. That's eight. No, that's nine. You already had eight already. No, you were just on <laughs> seven. Alright, well fine, you're on nine. Whatever. All right. I'm on you nine. got three more to get to twelve. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? Like just say, bro. Oh, that, okay. Kevin Durant. I'll put Kevin Durant to there. Okay, KD. That's ten. That's ten. What I say, Paolo? Nah, Paolo's not there yet. Chet? No, no. Jalen Williams? Nah, not yet. Not yet. I said Tatum already. Yeah. Who else on the east am I missing? Magic. Jalen Brown. Oh, Donovan Mitchell. I'm bugging Donovan out. Donovan Mitchell. Mitchell. Okay, that's I'm 11. I'm bugging out. I'm sorry. 11. Um, Cavaliers, Pacers. Eh, would you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jimmy Butler. <laughs> Oh my god, you got so squeaky just now. I thought it was like nah, it, yeah. <laughs> and someone said the Nasus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you see oh. him miss that dunk the other day? Oh my gosh. Yo, I used to love the Nasus when he, oh, I had so much promise for the no, it, 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 it. <laughs> Once a Nick, forever a Nick, man. Yo, that oh, dude is is comedic gold, son. I think is, actually bro. people from his team are laughing too. If you look at that that clip, heck yeah, he's Shut probably up. laughing. Like he is like <laughs> such a happy African dude, man. Like he's just oh oh. He he pl- he's, I think he's he funny. played the he played the wrong sport. He should be a football where he could just run and not have to worry about certain things. Yeah, because you know what, he should be like an Instagram star, bro. Like. I, I hope he is. I, I, or I like he does. some vine or something. Like bring vine back for that boy, for that man. He does when have he a great attitude. I'm he hoping he gets. Yeah, a... he's got a great attitude. Oh Hard. man, I had so much promise for him, but he's just a goofball. Someone said I have more hope on Frank Nilakina than the Nasus. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that dude just makes me laugh. So, oh my gosh, but yeah, you those are my look. I'll put LeBron at twelve. LeBron is all right. Okay. That's you remember when Thanasis broke his arm? <laughs> when he was on the New York Knicks. Nah, I don't remember him breaking his arm, man. How did he, he had this chase from behind block in the G League, and he <laughs> broke his arm like swatting somebody's shot. <laughs> I was like, that dude, I want that dude. And then I saw his brother. I was like, nah, I want that dude instead. Uh, I was like, oh, man. I thought his younger brother was supposed to be nice, man. Eh? He's nah, really... he's trash. He's yeah, trash. They, they, they hyped up the they, little brother like he's supposed hype, to be. They hype people, man. Yeah. Too much. Uh, they, and now they hyping up when my Yama's brother is supposed to be. Brother I say. mean, if he goes through the same program, then. Shoot. Yeah, that three on one play I saw the other day, man, that was crazy. This dude literally stopped three on one because they were scared. Everybody was scared to try to take the ball off. And they pass it out to the outside, and he still he still closed out of your man, man. Well, my yama is a scary play, but guys, I'm about to be out, man. Uh, I appreciate you guys, my guy Nick. This is a great discussion. Thank you, sir. Definitely have Thank to have you, more and more of these to talk about. Uh, we have some other things to talk about, man. Uh, not just play ins, but or the the playoffs, but to talk about Randall. <clears throat> <laughs> what the Knicks do next year? The Ka- you, hey, no, the Kyle Bridges. You, you know what's funny? Uh, Ace, your man Nick over here was talking about how he wanted. Uh, he's someone with Kyle Bridges, but he knows the only way to get with Kyle Bridges is if you have to trade Randall. There's no way we get. No, him I never said that. I said give up Bogey and give up. Um, Ain't no both. Ace, you know, somebody else off the bench, 
and you just yeah. give up enough picks to make this, it work. This guy, they man. got no picks. Hey, she knows it's not gonna work, so don't, don't, don't believe in Nick. They He's got dead. no picks, bro. He's a hater, yo. Don't let, don't listen to Nick. Man. They Come do on. have picks off the Harden trade and uh, the Nets. The Harden trade, seriously, from the Clippers. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They, they have some picks. picks. The Nets sure. got no picks. Stop Nets. saying that. The Houston got their picks from the Harden trade. The only thing they got was a bunch of crap Trace. from from trading. Right, right. They they trade you're with the right, Clippers. Right, Clippers right, got no right. talent. My bad. You're right. They don't have any picks. They had no trade. They had no trade chips. Come on, stop saying that. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. My bad. All right, fair enough. Just saying. It's, it's like they got nothing. But guys, I appreciate you guys, man. Definitely talk more and more. The Lakers win a, cl a yeah, close down against the Pelicans. It's actually a good game. I appreciate you guys, man. Fly guy, bandana, Dan, everybody. I can't shut you all out. Thank you for the uh, 10 hour super chat before uh, to uh, 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 Gail <laughs> Barry, <coughs> Hector Gaskin, John oh, Smith, man. Ricardo Cusa, JJ, MH, Cully, oh, yeah. Sire, Coach, uh, everybody. I appreciate you. White Mike, Keyshawn, Bumass Chelsea, uh, Bricks Nation, Nice, everybody. I appreciate you, man. I'm trying to do more and more of these if I can't do the videos. Just because, you know, we got we to gotta talk to you guys, man. We got to have much more content. So, I appreciate you guys, man. Until next time, man. Peace to God bless. And hey, I will talk up. to you. Oh. We got one more super chat coming. I do? Yeah. Oh, Nick G. Oh, wow. Thank you, Nick G, for the $2 super chat. It says, get some cough jobs. I do. Too bad these cough jobs don't even work. They just, it's like candy. Uh, it does actually nothing. Uh, unless I drink that Buckley's that the Caribbean's like that nasty Buckley. bowl. Oh sugar buckley's Ugh. it works though but it's disgusting Just get some honey that's it honey and tea you're right asshole honey you're right you're right i only have green tea i'm not trying to stay up but no 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 any kind of tea it doesn't matter i know thank thank you mom anyway guys i appreciate you guys uh nick g as always peace salute god bless and i will talk to you guys later we are out Thanks. salute man peace You're like such a horrible human being for subjecting these people to. Uh, you know he's the one, right? Back. Oh snap! <laughs> <laughs> You're like subjecting people to your COVID cough, man. Like what? The <laughs> such a horrible human being. <laughs>